new video, new format, and what better way to get started than having a nice, simple background made in Spline in just a few clicks, chuck a Tailwind UI template in, and boom, you got your background in your web application. Now we've seen some examples in Webflow and Framework, but adding a Spline component isn't really that hard into a code base project. So let's just get started. Now, before we get into it, you'll need an account on Spline where you pop in a few details or just link your Google account and then you're on your way to your 3D journey. Once you've got your account set up, we're going to have this screen and all we need to do is click new file, have this loading screen, which will create a new project. And then after that, we'll be great greeted with this, but we don't need this right now. All we need is a rectangle. Yep, you heard me right. All we need is just a rectangle. Uh, we might need a camera later on, but the point being is that we don't need to add some complicated shapes. So we'll keep the size in the background, but we're going to add some materials. So the first material we're going to add is the coloring, and which is called normal. Now we can add some depths to make the gradients manually, but we're going to be making a simple background. We don't need to play around with the colors too much. All we need is just to, just to have this nice gradient effect. And you can see just by the icon here, we've got that nice color we were seeing in that background, which I initially showed you. So in order for this to change, we're going to add a displace material and we're going to crank this up to 100 and you can start to see the color change. And now what we're going to do is keep the scale at 10, but we're going to add some movements and it's starting to see the effect we were having. Let's keep it at 15. All right, once those values are set, now we want to make sure that we have the change into another scale and movement. So what we're going to do is add another state. So at the moment, these two are the same. But what we're going to do is this is going to stay as it is. And when we go to the second state, we change this to, let's say, about 27.5 and let's change the movement about not too much probably 17.50 could start to see some of the colors here and if we press play you'll see nothing happens and that's expected because we haven't said anything to trigger this to go into this state so this is where events play in and if we click on this, we have a bunch of options here. The start means that everything will play by default. There is no input or any type of interaction required. So this will play automatically. But we want to use a transition because we are transitioning from the base state to the state. Now, you may, you may think, or do we need to do some sort of video editing type skills or we need to adjust the angles or something like that? No, 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 no. You don't need to do much of that. All you need to do is set the transition from base state to state. And if we press play, that was quick, but that's what we want. Now we're going to change the timing. So I'll make this about... 40 seconds that might be some sl slow transition ah we'll we'll do it 20 seconds might be too long start it i'm gonna make it linear and see yeah okay so you can see you need to play around with this Linear is our best bet here. So we'll use that. And what we want to do, so if we run this for 20 seconds, and if we look at this, 
it's giving this nice effect. You can see the purple coming in, the blue. But eventually, you should see it just stops. And that is there. So what we need to do is run this in a loop. So we need to make it in an infinite loop. And we'll do ping pong reverse. So what it will do is that it will go to that state and then it will come back. It will reverse itself. It won't go. So if we go ping pong, I believe what it will do is that it will go back to the base state directly and then start the transition again. But we want to transition back as well. So to have this consistency, we'll just do ping pong reverse and press play. And now after 20 seconds, actually for this demonstration, I'll just do five seconds so that we don't have to wait all that time. You can see this is constantly moving and I'm, I believe we've gone past more than five seconds, which is good. So what we'll do is make that 20 seconds again so that it's, it's a bit more smoother. And I believe that should be done, at least for the rectangle part. There's one more thing we need to add, and that is the camera. Because if you try to export this, all you're going to get is this rectangle. And that's not what you want. We want the color effect. So what we'll do with this camera is we're going to change the zoom to about... Yeah, about 8.69. 8 that seems to do it. And I think we don't need to do much with the FOV. So just press play. And would you look at that? You got some colors changing. Great. So what we need to do right now is export this, add it to our web application, and boom, we're done. So Let's hop on to our code editor and let's just add this. All right, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using React with Wait. You may want to use another framework or the many frameworks that are out there and debate which one is better. But for this demo, I'm just going to be using Wait. So avoid the setup part of this video when it comes to installing Tailwind, the Wait setup and everything like that. But if you want me to do that as part of the video, feel free to leave a comment. And if there's a high demand for it, then I will do it. But I will make sure to leave some documentation in the description. All right, let's get back into it. So let's go to the Tailwind UI site, which is right here. And let's browse components. And let's add a hero section. And if you see here, we got some ability to get some code out of this. Now, if you scroll down and see these other components, unfortunately, these are all paid. So, and uh, it, is an, it is a nice service. So if you want to get those components, then you're going to have to pay for Tailwind UI. But they've been generous enough to give the initial template. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our in app.jsx, almost said index there. And what we're going to do is replace all of this with this. So I'm going to start off with the imports. Copy this. Get, let's get this array of navigation. We're not going to do much with it. So, but just to make sure that it doesn't break. And you can start to see my IntelliSense is giving some errors, but that's not much of a problem. All we need to do is make sure this all fits in. And if we do that here, we should see no errors. Cool. All right, and just to test it, we're going to do npm 
run dev. And we see some errors. And that is because we don't have headless UI React installed or hero icons installed. So let's install that. But along with that, we're also going to add some spline packages. So spline runtime and spline react spline. The reason for that is that spline is going to give us a component and that will allow us to paste it in. Essentially, we don't need to copy the link and then just make an iframe and do all of that. Spline has already given it to us. So let's just install those packages. So I'll grab it from my notes here, paste it in. It will install. And then after that, we shall restart our application. And we got no errors. So I'm going to copy that because I have two other different browsers running. Paste that in. And there we go. We got our Tailwind component. Cool. So the next step is, and I'm sure you can guess, is add that spline component. So what we're going to do is export this. And before we do that, we're going to rename this to gradient spline and then press export. And before we fully export this, actually, we will go to code export. And before we fully export this and grab all of this, we're going to go into play settings. We're going to hide the background. We're going to disable all of this. We don't want any of that. Uh, now, if you're trying to customize this, then yeah, that varies in your situation, but we don't want all of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to get it for React. And make sure you press update code export because you want to make sure you got the latest. And we're just going to copy this. Actually, I'm going to do it separately because we already have an existing component. So I'm going to grab this import and I am going to change this right next to each other so that we can go between them. So paste that in here and we have an error because I have not used it. And we'll just chuck this component just before the header. Now, if we save this and then we try to run this. Actually, what we're going to do is move this back. But if you see this, we got the background. Not exactly how we looked at it initially, but we're getting there. So let's go back here. So what we're going to do now is that because this component is expandable, we're going to add a class name. And because we are using Tailwind CSS, we're going to add absolute inset to zero and then Z index to zero. And if you look at this, we got it. Now you may want to play around with the styling of the text, make this white, make this white, or make it another color as per your design. But the objective is done and you got your background. We've got something a bit more extra here, but uh, you can remove this. So we've got these SVGs in the bottom around about here. So you can remove that. And there's one probably up here as well. But for the demonstration of this video, we've achieved our objective. And there we have it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more of this type of content, subscribe. And I would appreciate if you give me some feedback in the comments. And let me know what I can improve. Let me know what you like about it. And yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching and see you all later.